Hey everybody, KC here. Interesting story uh, from Bloomberg the other day about how the skincare brand Neutrogena lost its way and has seen um, persistent quarters of lowered sales and profits. And basically it comes down to three things. One, they took their eye off the ball. Two, they got complacent. And three, they totally lost track of their customers. Those are sins, by the way, uh, that many companies commit and that every company is capable of. So basically it comes down to this. Um, I quote, faced with pandemic uh, induced ingredient shortages, the brand focused on getting core items on shelves and discontinued some customers' favorite creams and cleansers. They pulled back on advertising and innovation. And as customers flocked to TikTok to discuss all things skincare related, the brand was slow to follow them. By the way, if you have to discontinue things, even if temporarily, it's great to use things like social media to communicate with customers about why you're doing it. You can get away with a lot of stuff as long as you explain to customers why. And by the way, if you say to them, hey, let us know if this is your favorite and we'll make sure we let you know when they're back on shelves and available and maybe even send them a free sample. There's a way to turn these things to your advantage unless you don't pay attention. I go on. When uh, Johnson & Johnson bought Neutrogena in 1994 for almost $1 billion, the healthcare giant gave the brand greater distribution and deeper pockets for advertising. The line of products expanded over the years, and they fueled sales gains and garnered a cult-like following among young women. And for a while, Neutrogena continued to feel like an independent, family-run brand that was separate from its parent company's corporate influence. But as J&J &J brought Neutrogena more into the corporate fold, it started to lose its way. As often happens in acquisitions, the brand's dedicated sales team was tapped to sell products across the parent company's portfolio. Neutrogena began to fall off the radar, radar of consumers and physicians amid rising competition. Furthermore, one of the things that one of the lines that historically distinguished them from the rivals was sun protection. But, you know, consumer, consumer concerns arose over the safety of chemical-based sunscreens, which is something that Neutrogena did. That's when CeraVe swooped in and, and with a hydrating mineral-based sunscreen that in new 2019 grabbed significant shopper attention. While Neutrogena had its own mineral sunscreen under the Zier, Sheer Zinc label, a dermatologist said it was basically lost in the noise. CeraVe began marketing its products in on TikTok in 2020. It climbed its way to Teen Girl's top skincare brand, where it's now been ever since. CeraVe cornered nearly 29% of skincare sales across the country in 2023. Neutrogena was late to TikTok, and now they've been edged out not just by CeraVe, but by the ordinary La Roche Posay, Cetaphil, and Glow Recipe. All brand names, I have to be honest with you, I have no idea what they are. But to me, the, the, the lesson is really clear. I repeat, they took their eye off the ball, they got complacent, and they lost track of the customer. And again, those are sins that many companies commit and of which every company is capable. That's what's on my mind this morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.